Welcome back. Today we're in 1 Samuel chapter 29, verses 1 to 5. Let's see what happens now. Then the Philistines gathered together all their armies at Aphek, and the Israelites encamped by a fountain which is in Jezreel. And the lords of the Philistines passed in review by hundreds and by thousands, but David and his men passed in review at the rear with Ashish. Then the princes of the Philistines said, What are these Hebrews doing here? And Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, Is this not David, the servant of Saul, king of Israel, who has been with me these days or these years? And to this day I have found no fault in him, since he defected to me. But the princes of the Philistines were angry with him. So the princes of the Philistines said to him, Make this fellow return, that he may go back to the place which you have appointed for him, and do not let him go down with us to battle, Lest in the battle he become our adversary, for with what could he reconcile himself to his master, if not with the heads of these men? Is this not David, of whom they sang to one another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Now let's pause there and think about this. Hey, the lords of the Philistines have a point. You're going to trust this guy, this guy that uh, will kill Philistines at the drop of the hat, at least historically. They don't trust him, and they think, you know, this is a way for him to get back in with Saul. Apparently, they don't realize Saul is uh, manically, uh, mentally ill, and David is never going to be in a peaceful relation with Saul, because Saul is just bent, and this can't be helped. But anyway, they don't trust David, and we have seen that they don't really have all the reason to trust David. Ashish is quite convinced, and so, but this is how we're going to get David, this is how God's going to get David out of the battle, God, I don't think, wants David fighting the, the Israelites. He doesn't want it. And so uh, they're not the other, other. So the other Philistine lords are not going to allow it under any circumstance. And so this is how it turns out. You know, God has a way of intervening providentially so that his purposes get accomplished. And David was in kind of a tough spot here, but God's going to solve it for him by simply causing this to work out this way. So David's not going into this battle between the Hebrews and the Philistines. David's going to be out. But today we see what happens when uh, the lords of the Philistines said, uh-uh, he's not coming. So we learn from this today a little bit more about providence. God has a way to intervene. Many times we can't see how that's going to be. Could David foresee this? Not, not necessarily. Could, could Achish? Could the lords of the Philistines? Could Saul? Could anybody foresee this? Maybe one of the things that Saul was worried about is that David would show up and fight with the Philistines against Israel. That wasn't going to happen, but Saul doesn't know. So anyway, we have all these things, but you know what? God is on his throne. God works providentially. God is in control. And sometimes we, uh, the, the pieces on the board move and we find ourselves moving along with them because God simply takes control. I kind of think that's what happened here. So let's not despair when we come to a, a crucible, a situation that we don't know really how to deal with. It may be that God will come through at the last moment. Usually that's about his timing. And it's good for us to learn to trust in him more. And he'll do that if we just let him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we're learning lessons from the book of 1 Samuel, and we thank you that uh, we see more lessons, several lessons in this book of your providential guiding. And here's a case where David's in a tough spot to fight his own people, uh, but you have intervened so that that will not be the case. So, Lord, thank you for being one who sometimes intervenes when we are really stuck in rough spots. We just pray, Lord, that we will be able to sense your intervention and trust in you and grow closer to you and by trusting in you. Thank you for hearing our prayers, that you will intervene in our life for your good and your kingdom's good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God will intervene for his name's sake, and it'll turn out better for you and I. God be with you today in all that you do.